بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم the next thing we'll talk about some design principles for network security now in order to secure your network properly we need to make sure that we are following some basic design principles like some of them we'll be discussing here like the first one starting with network security policies the network security policies are nothing but it's like a set of rules which we are going to define in the company uh, which is which which tells what are the resources they can access what are the resources they cannot access like something like let's say you have some accounts user now we can say accounts user should be able to only access the resources on the accounts or the finance departments and they should be able to access some internet but they should not be able to access anything other than that maybe you got some hr department should be able to access all the hr related information apart from the internet or maybe you got some it team and you got some set of engineers a security engineer can make these changes routing switching engineer can make these changes so you need to define some kind of security policies because most of the end users especially like accounts user if the accounts user is trying to access some information other than what is defined and if the if is not aware of that then we can, we can't do actually anything so we need to define some policies like when the employee joins or the user joins he should be educated to with all the policies network security policies like what they can access what they cannot access uh, what are the rules they should they should follow okay so the main the main job of the network security engineer is once these rules are defined so probably the network engineer is going to follow these rules or a guide and based on that particular guide he is going to configure the network to make sure that accounts user should only access the resources on the accounts or on the internet so as a network security engineer it is our job to properly configure change or monitor log all these things as per the policies and also respond to the attacks if if any attack occurs Now, next thing is defense in depth. Now, defense in depth is like a multi-layer approach for protecting your network. Like, uh, if if you take an example, let's say in my network, I'm I'm installing some kind of firewall, and then we got some specific servers, and we want the users to be on the internet should be able to access these servers. So we define some firewall policies on on the firewall, and based on the policies, the traffic is allowed or denied. Now, if the attacker is trying to access the servers, he can probably introduce some kind of malicious traffic, which firewalls may not detect, and that can spread in the network. So, the, so adding the firewall is really good, but at the same time, you need to follow some multi-layer approach, like multiple levels of security, where you also install some kind of antivirus or IPS devices in the network, and at the end users, we generally install some kind of antivirus programs. so that the end devices can detect that or ips device which will uh, detect some kind of malicious traffic or maybe some kind of firewalls uh, who, which can filter at the application level uh, firewalls or the next generation firewalls so this is what we call as defense in depth now in defense in depth we we provide some security in multiple places so that it makes very difficult for the attacker to to get into get into the network because when you are def- when you are just installing the firewalls maybe these firewalls have some vulnerabilities or maybe if you are just using antivirus uh, maybe all the attacks may not be detected by the antivirus uh, but if you are doing this multi multi approach method uh, each, you got multiple levels of security in general now next thing is like network segmentation the network segmentation deals with uh separating the traf- separating the traffic into zones like uh you you just place all the servers in a separate vlan and maybe you 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 just place all the resources uh, in the lan lan is separated into separate vlans maybe some kind of dmz vlan and some lan vlans and also make sure that your internet traffic is also separated so this will ensure that we install some kind of firewalls in between or some security devices or the routers which will decide what traffic is allowed between lan to dmz or dmz to lan or who can access the servers and what 
uh, which users can access or what kind of security policies you want to apply. So this will make much easier if you have a segmentation of your network instead of placing everything into the into the same network. So the normal uh, segmentation depends upon uh, like like we we segment the network based on the assets type or the value or the level of security you want to apply into different different VLANs. Typically, we call it as zones. Now the next next principle you need to follow is like least privileges. Least privileges is just like let's say I got an end user, and we want this end user uh, should 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 be given minimum privileges like this end user. Let's say the user one do not have admin rights, which means he cannot install the application. So he just have very basic access. He can just simply log into the computer and he can access the internet and he access some basic applications, that's it. So you should not give a full access to any user and we will be giving a very minimum access, whatever is required for him to do his job. Or uh, it can be like, let's say the users on the internet, we implement some policies saying that all the traffic, the user sitting on the inter, uh, in the LAN can access internet, but not everything on the internet. So you cannot download the files. So we, we just provide some minimum access to the users, what is what is required for them to do the basic jobs. Like configuring some kind of ACLs, which is going to deny all the traffic and only permit a specific traffic what they want, what, what should go from LAN to internet or from LAN to specific servers, depends. Now the next thing is like separation of duties. Separation of duties like a no single user or the individual should have a capability to execute a set of tasks. Just like uh, there is a possibility like a user, let's say he tries to copy some files or maybe may end up deleting the files uh, which can create an issue generally. Or maybe he's trying to copy the file so that he can leak this file outside the network. So we need to make sure that the, that particular user do not have a single level of access. So which means in order to copy the file, probably he should get uh, some permissions from the next level or he should be able to log in with some user account uh, in order to open the file. Uh, maybe he just have a read permissions, but he cannot move that particular files. So just like multiple people permissions. And also it's, it's important that if some event occurs, probably it's, it's really important that you do some kind of logging that uh, whenever any user tries to delete or log into the server, probably you need to keep a track when he logged in and what are the different actions he took, uh, more like accounting kind of thing. That is also something recommended. So it, it's really important that to prevent a single person from, uh, from logging to the devices and maybe accidentally delete or do or delete or copy the files. The next thing is like weakest link. Weakest link is like the humans will be considered as the weakest link in your network and can be easily manipulated by some social engineering attacks. So typically we need to make sure that the users, uh, it, we need to educate the users probably not to use any kind of weak passwords, do not use their own names or, or their pet names probably as a passwords. And we need to educate them to use some complex passwords as well as we need to educate them not to share their credentials or the login details with any unknown other unknown persons either either on phone or or to or by emails so this is also one one thing we need to remember the weakest link the the humans now the last thing we also need to make sure that uh, the particular any, any activity which is which is going on in your network, maybe the users are trying to log into the servers or trying to copy some files or maybe uh, changing some configurations or changing configuration in the network. This all should be audited, accounted by using some external servers, triplet servers. We'll talk about this later on sections by using some uh, triplet TACAX servers, uh, which can be used for forensic analysis. So accountability is also important and so that the, you, can, you can actually keep a track of the author or the user who actually who, who logged in and what are the changes he did. And also make sure that the user, when he logs in, 
uh, we need to make sure that uh, we have a proper evidence that the user has logged in and and he, he made some changes to the information so so this non repetition is just like uh, saying that the user cannot deny that he did not do that because we have a proper evidence for the actions what he actually uh, what are the things he actually done